what I'm going to do for this case, um, almost everybody here has already seen how we take up cases. Sometimes we put the whole plan together. Other times we just go into the specific requireds. That saves us time. We cover the requireds in more detail. For this one, I'm going to do the plan. We're going to walk through the case. We're going to put the whole plan together. I will have time to go into the requireds. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a sample response. Uh, we'll look at the evaluation guide. And I'll even look at some technical points for financial accounting which came up here. So uh, again, I will cover a lot um, in, I don't know, approximately two hours or whatever I have here, okay? We'll take a break, like in the middle, because I know it's a long time to sit. Please stop me if you have any questions uh, um, or comments along the way, either use the chat box or unmute your microphone. All right, everybody good? So here's what this case covered just to give you a little bit of a bird's eye view. Um, we had a decent amount of assurance. We had internal controls. We had testing of controls. We had some nice financial accounting. We had governance, we had tax, we had finance. So uh, we're talking five competencies. That's pretty typical. You would expect to get somewhere between four and six of the competencies on a day three question. So this is pretty, um, uh, typical. Okay. Well, let's go. All right. So people, I'm going to put my plan together. Pretend that I'm doing this on a sample piece of paper because that's how I would do it. You're going to see the plan come up on the right side of the page as I'm going through this. As usual, you don't have to have exactly the same points that I have. I'll try and justify and explain why I'm writing down certain things. You could have other points. If you want to tell me along the way, by all means, tell me um, a few of other things. Okay. In the very first paragraph, I actually wrote down a number of points. First of all, I always track the dates. So I think that's a very good habit to get into. You should always track dates. The truth is, Sometimes it matters, other times it doesn't. You just won't know. Like you're just not gonna know if the dates are gonna be important or not. So you just have to track them. It's now March 20th, fine. I have my role, who am I? So this is an interesting role. It's not such a standard traditional role. I'm not the external auditor, I'm a controller. Fine. This the um, the type of company, I always note that. That's important. So we're dealing with here a public company. Maple Construction, it's on the TSC. It's a public company. And my year end, that's another date. Okay, fine. You can write that down. Is a year end is February 28th. So I do recommend people keep track of the three things Essentially, there are three things I just wrote down. Dates, the type of company, and uh, the role, who you are. Okay, so I, I will track those things in every single case. In the second paragraph, um, I don't have time to copy out the whole paragraph, but I did notice um, they seem to make a very big deal out of these deadlines. So I wrote down six words, okay? Just to basic, just because I thought, I don't know, they're making a big deal out of this, that, you know, key timelines, significant penalties. They're really emphasizing this. My reputation could be hurt. So I don't know. I just wrote, the, I just wrote it down just because it, 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 you know, it sounds important. They're stressing it. They're emphasizing it. I also wrote down the last uh, sentence where they give me a mission statement. And what I did with the mission statement, and people, this is, I, I would also strongly recommend you do this. Every time they have a mission statement, all you have to do is look at the key points that the mission statement encompasses. 
it's some it's going to be somewhere between two and five points. This one happens to have four. So I just write down the key points. And I, I know it almost seems like I'm rewriting the whole mission statement, but no, I think the mission statement has four things. The four things are what? Quality, high quality locations, built on time. Okay, so timeliness. The way you want, I guess their preferences. And quality service. So, as I said, this mission statement is four. Um, it contains four key points. Usually it's somewhere between two and five. Okay, so I kind of note that. I don't even know my requireds are yet, but somebody's giving me a mission statement in the second paragraph. I'm going to write it down. All right. And then here come my requireds. As a leader of the controls, you've been asked by the CFO to develop a plan to assess the internal controls, okay, specifically the controls over the construction project reporting and to just improvements. You should also discuss how to test existing controls. So people look, this is an important point. And I have a feeling, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe I am, I hopefully I'm wrong, but I have a feeling some people did not break out their requireds the way that you see in front of you. If I was going to ask you how many requireds are in that paragraph, what's the answer I'm looking for? Two. Sorry? Two. Two. Right. That's the answer I'm looking for. What some people do is they see one required. Internal control slash testing. It's not one required. It's two requires. You take these requires very seriously. I do not have to discuss testing if I discuss where they have weaknesses in their internal controls. Look at the words. You should also, also, that means it's another require. Discuss how to test existing controls. So what ends up happening, I think, for some people, they don't recognize these are two separate requires and they lump it all together. And by lumping it all together, you may or may not get it. I don't know if you're gonna have a test in there. Yes, I have a hand up, uh, Vimlash. Uh, so can't we just to add two requires in one Sorry? So these are they require and we are able to identify those two. Can't we just do together like in one requirement? There's two separate things. It will be wrong if you are if you are covering all the points, but it's in a one requirement. Look. That will be wrong. You do it, if you do it as one required and you give me the weaknesses in internal control and how to improve them. And then you also tell me how to test the existing controls, then fine. Then it's just semantics, okay? My concern okay. is that if you treat it as one required, the testing gets lost. Do you understand what this paragraph is saying? This paragraph is saying that some of our internal controls are weak. I need you to comment on the ones that are weak and tell me how they can be improved. But it doesn't mean I have no internal controls. I have some. And for the ones I have, I'd like to know how to test them. It's not the same thing. I'm not telling you to test the weaknesses. Uh, we mean test the weak. I don't even know what that means, test the weaknesses. I have weaknesses in internal controls suggest what, tell me what the weakness is and tell me how to improve it. But that doesn't mean I have zero internal controls. I have some. And for those, I want to know how to test them. To me, that's a separate require. I don't need this last sentence, quite honestly. I, I, they could have given me just one require, like many cases do. Talk about the internal controls. 
I don't really need this last sentence. It's an added required. Look at the word also. All I'm doing is reading what it says here. I don't think I'm interpreting uh, or, or doing something like that's fancy or anything here. I'm just reading it. It says you should also, whatever follows the word also, is another required. That's all I'm saying. That's all. I just want you to read it, okay, and, and, and don't sit there and interpret it and, and whatever, you know, give me and give me your own take on this. Just read it. You should also means there's something else. There's a second required. Okay, next. Um, uh, nothing in the next paragraph. Okay, you met with Anne, whatever. Okay, fine. And then I have another required. And this one's simple. All right. He'd like to know if the business being run in a manner consistent with the company's mission statement. Okay. I just wrote it down. Simple. Fine. And then we have financial accounting. He asks you to discuss the appropriate treatment for recognizing revenue on the jobs performed. And they, they follow IFRS, which is no big surprise. Um, it's a public company. Okay. So we have an accounting. Now, people, how many financial accounting issues do I have here? The answer I'm looking for, no tricks, one. Why is there one? Because that's the only one they've asked me. If they would say discuss financial accounting issues, plural, I'd have more than one. Sometimes you know what they are. Sometimes you don't know what they are. Hey, I don't know. This time I know what they are. It's revenue. I just have one. Maybe I'll get something in the appendix. I don't know. But at the moment, that's all I have. Then I have a tax, then I have tax issues, and this is plural. And what do I have to do here? I have to do two things that could impact the calculation. So I have to talk about these tax issues, how they would impact the calculation, and any compliance issues. So I'll ask the same question I asked for financial accounting. How many tax issues? Well, at least two. I mean, issues is plural. I don't, I don't know what the issues are that will impact the calculation. There could be one, there could be more than one, probably more than one. And I have to deal with compliance. I wrote plus, okay? And lastly, I don't know if this is management accounting or finance, they're concerned about a construction project and he's worried about losing money. So he wants you to look at it, should we complete the job or should we allow someone else, a third party, this Vertigo construction to take over the project? So, all right, sounds like management, accounting, finance. I don't really care so much what competency it is, but should we complete the job or should we transfer it out? Okay. Now, this looks pretty normal, pretty standard for a day three multi. It's 90 minutes long. How many AOs am I expecting on a typical day three question? What's the range? What's the average? Somebody tell me. The range is five to eight. The average is six to seven. I don't want you trying to guess assessment opportunities. I'm only bringing that up to say to you, this could easily lead to six to seven, even eight assessment opportunities. I got six requires, depending on how you count them, whatever. This looks very normal to me. Now, I don't know, maybe I'll get another required in, in an appendix, maybe I won't. I'm just saying I like it when you have um, a good handle after you read the first page, if this is a normal first page. As you know, these cases follow a pattern. One to two pages and then the appendices. Most of the requireds or all the requireds come out in the first one to two pages. This is per, looks pretty normal. Rhythm said, yeah, five to seven. Okay, yeah. So this looks very normal. Now, the way that we do our plans, what I would now do 
is I'm going to flip the slide. I'm going to go into the first appendix. I would take these titles and I'd leave myself space. I know you don't see space here, but I would take them and put a few on each page. You don't have to put one per page. I don't care, put two or three per page and leave myself space. And I plan on filling them in as I read the rest of the case. Okay, that's how I set up all of my plans. Okay, so people, let's go. Appendix one, notice I'm leaving myself space here. I don't have room on the one, on the one slide, people. I only have four titles here. I don't have room to write them all down. I'm just writing the ones down that are gonna affect like this slide, okay? But uh, if I was doing this on paper, I would have six titles. Okay, uh, what is this? I don't know, he's discusses with John Albertson. Okay, fine. Okay, the very first paragraph. On this Burger Barn contract, what happened here? Profits were supposed to be 600,000. They had a two month delay because of problems. Revenues were decreased by 900,000. And the loss was recognized immediately, correct from an accounting perspective. Okay, so it doesn't sound like an accounting issue, but people, you can see what I wrote down here. This sounds pretty serious to me. They were gonna have profits and they ended up losing Contract revenues were reduced by 900,000. And let me do the second one, because it also kind of relates. There's another thing called Pizza King, where they did it right from an accounting standpoint. They, I don't know, some schedule was misread by an engineer. They messed up on the dates. And it led to major loss rather than a profit. And they counted for it retrospectively, meaning they went backwards, which is correct, correctly from an accounting perspective. So not surprisingly, I don't really have an accounting issue here. I didn't even have another accounting required. I said to you, we have one accounting required revenue. Uh, that's all we got. So I'm not surprised these are not accounting. What are they? So people look what I wrote down. Okay, this concerns me. These are major losses. These are major losses. And if you want to read one more paragraph here, Anne mentions she does not want to put too much pressure on the engineers. They have, a stre they have stressful jobs. She understands mistakes are bound to happen. We just read two mistakes. So people, you're supposed to read these three paragraphs and think to yourself, this is insane. This is crazy. Why is it crazy? Why is it crazy? If you had to give me one or two reasons from what we've just read so far, After reading those three paragraphs, tell me why it's crazy. Anyone? Because of the mistakes, uh, they are losing the profit. Okay, good. I'll expand a little bit. Okay. One reason that I'm looking for is okay um they are one reason is they are losing massive amounts of money okay people look you've got to kind of look at materiality here so some people are writing like in the chat um and it's true inaccurate estimates that's true clerical errors okay company's going to losses man's not taking action good tone at the top right wrong bonus compensation okay people look I just want to hear, I want to emphasize. I want to emphasize. Number one, you look at the dollar amounts. These are not small dollar amounts. When was the last time you lost 600,000? 
or your company? When was the last time you were supposed to be profitable and then had a loss of 400? In other words, people, I want you to notice that these are massive. These are massive losses because of errors. This is not everyday, these are not everyday occurrences. Most people don't lose $600,000. Oops, I read a deadline wrong. There goes 600K. I just want you to recognize that. And there's a second reason, and we read it on the previous page. Did I not write down that timelines were extremely important? Their reputation could be hurt. Deadlines were extremely important. And here we are missing and messing up deadlines. So people look, I know a lot of people would pick up on the fact that tone at the top is not good. And what she's saying is crazy. She's saying, let's not put too much pressure on the engineers. They're making massive mistakes that are costing the company hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially hurting their reputation. We just told you it's critical on the previous page to have meet these deadlines. And here's two they didn't meet. So obviously she should be very worried about this. So people, I'm just trying to drive home the point. I know a lot of people would get this, but I'm trying to drive home the point. You, sh you should look at the materiality of things in these questions. You know what I mean? You don't just look at it and go, yeah, okay, whatever. It's a wrong estimate. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. That's what I'm, tr I'm trying to emphasize, okay? You look at the numbers. You look at what we just read on the previous page. I didn't write that down for nothing. The case emphasized deadlines and timelines are critical. It used strong language. And two seconds later, we got problems. We're breaching the deadlines. That is something to notice. That's all. I'm not even saying you won't get the point. You probably will get the point. Okay, even if you notice it and you don't notice how important it is. But I'm just trying to drive home that it is important. And, and for, for one or, or both of those, you don't even need both those reasons. It's important. So again, I wrote this down. Okay, fine. I think what I wrote down was fine. You want to stress it more, fine. I just wrote down, tone at the top is not good. Affects your reputation. Key success factors. Okay. Accounting, no issue. All right. And now, here's another reason somebody said, and it's also a good reason, is, you know, these engineers have a major bias. Their bonus could be impacted. Um, I don't know if they lost money or made money or whatever, but the bottom line is the engineers who, who seem to be causing this problem they themselves could be impacted by this. They've got a major, they have a major bias here. Okay. Um, the last paragraph, I thought maybe that relates to the mission statement and visits each construction site to assess quality. She was not pleased. A number of instances, they use cheap materials, compromise quality of the job. Okay. Consistent with the mission statement, well, why did she only visit once? And they're using cheap material. Well, there could be quality problems. All right, everyone good? And then I have a whole bunch of internal controls. This appendix two with the chief engineer. This is all internal control problems. So it's find the weakness. Okay, find the weakness here, paragraph after paragraph. So, people, what's the weakness in the first, in, the, in number one? Okay, let's just get these quickly. What's the weakness in number one? Um, they're not reading the full contracts, and as the lead engineer, um, she at least should be reading the full thing. You know what? I, I hear your point. I'm not sure I'll agree. 
I don't know. Um, so it's just have to fire. Read. Sorry. So it's just see. I thought there was two in this one because there's also that the original contracts are just being kept in a vault in the basement. Like it could be kept electronically elsewhere. Oh, if, if that's a that's an interesting point. Let me just deal with the first point. Look, sure. I don't think. I don't think it's a weakness to not reading the whole contract. And the reason I don't think that is because it says they're full of boilerplate material. Now you wanna say they should read it once. Okay, fine, you're probably right. They should read the boilerplate once. Why do I have to read boilerplate stuff that's the same from contract to contract every time? I probably don't. I don't think that's a weakness. Somebody wrote down, I think the weakness is who's reviewing it? Who's reviewing? They're preparing summaries. Who's reviewing the summaries? I hope you enjoyed watching this case excerpt take up from the CP Day 3 case writing course. If you'd like to see the remainder of this take up, as well as a number of take ups of other simulated CP cases, as well as our course on case writing techniques, I would strongly recommend that you register for this course. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the course and you're not already on our website, for more information, please go to our website, passyourcpa.ca. Once you're there, you'll see a number of boxes. Click on the box that says CP Students. Then once you're on the homepage, put your cursor over Past Courses, which is at the top of the homepage. There'll be a drop-down menu. Then click on CP Case Writing Prep Courses and then click on read more for the CP Day 3 case writing course, and you'll get lots more information with regard to this course. If you have any questions regarding this course, or you'd like to know anything else about PASS, both Ira and I would be delighted to communicate with you. Feel free to email either myself, Michael Levy, or my partner, Ira Walfish, and uh, we'll answer whatever questions you have. You can contact us by Mia, by email, by phone, by WhatsApp, by whatever means suits you. We really look forward to seeing you in the course.